disorder is obviously an incredibly important uh, public health problem and at long last seems to be getting the attention uh, that it uh, deserves. Um, the entire speech of the uh, governor of Vermont recently was about this uh, matter. The Senate president at uh, uh, Massachusetts Senate uh, made this a major uh, priority in the recent statement she made. And I'm very pleased to report that in a strategic uh, plan that MGH uh, recently uh, completed, uh, making a major push in, uh, on addiction use uh, disorders and um, in, in the communities we serve is going to be a very important part of this, uh, this uh, plan in our future. Uh, and we're doing that not only because we believe strongly in serving our communities, but we also believe that it can help reduce the uh, cost of care as, uh, as well for the population so that we're serving. So we're going to be counting on John and his uh, colleagues in psychiatry and other departments to help uh, make the promise of a, an expanded program in this area uh, possible. Uh, one of the, a couple of uh, factoids that were pretty startling to me and I think helped uh, drive this recent decision uh, of the hospital is that if you look across the country, 22% of patients in general medicine, even general medical beds across this country uh, have are there uh, because of or at least partially due to uh, substance use disorders. Uh, within our high risk care management program at Mass General Hospital, 29% of the patients uh, are suffering from substance use disorders. And on our uh, inpatient service, uh, on any given day at, the, at Mass General, about there are 30 to 40 patients there because of substance use disorders. And so clearly there is a real opportunity to make a difference in the lives of these in individuals by uh, uh, better connecting treatment with community resources in a comprehensive way, a, better, a real opportunity to make a difference in the health of uh, these communities. And I think also a big opportunity to bend the cost curve by addressing this issue as well. So it is something we are very bullish about and thank uh, John and his uh, colleagues for uh, helping us to develop some very exciting uh, plans and uh, that we will be moving forward with uh, uh, shortly. Um, this uh, professorship will give uh, John uh, more flexible resources to um, pursue his work, uh, his uh, clinical and academic work, and, uh, and these professorships are really one of the greatest honors that we can bestow upon our, our, our faculty, and, uh, and John is, uh, is obviously very uh, deserving of this uh, recognition. Uh, he is uh, the program director of the Addiction Recovery Management Program and is an associate director of the Center for Addiction Medicine at MGH. In October, uh, we, we publicly announced the establishment of the Recovery Research Institute within the MGH uh, Department of Psychiatry, and the aim of that institute is to, prevent, uh, to present evidence about addiction recovery and how people with addiction can achieve recovery by engaging with communities to support their efforts or by helping these individuals uh, seek treatment. So uh, John is nationally recognized for his work in addiction care. Uh, he has served as a consultant to the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, the U.S. Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Center for Substance Abuse Treatment, and the U.S. Department of Education and the NIH. Uh, a scholar as well, he is uh, the author of many peer-reviewed articles, and he recently published the first comprehensive text on addiction recovery management entitled Addiction Recovery Management Theory, Research, and, uh, and Practice. So, John, congratulations on this great recognition. Although we sometimes refer to these as chairs, we certainly hope you won't be uh, sitting uh, in, in it and you will uh, use it to uh, move more quickly than, uh, than ever before because certainly the field that you work on uh, needs your, uh, your efforts uh, desperately. Uh, so it is my great pleasure at this point to uh, turn the floor over to uh, Jerry Rosenbaum, uh, who leads uh, this, uh, this great uh, department of psychiatry. I uh, sometimes joke with Jerry, I'm, I'm more than joking, that uh, his department seems to have an infinite supply of very smart, very nice, very passionate, very caring, very creative uh, people. Uh, and so I don't know how exactly he uh, does it, but uh, he, he does a great job leading this, uh, this department and, and nurturing such incredible talent that we're blessed to have. So Jerry, thank you. Thanks, Peter. And actually, one of the answers to that question is you and MGH, which really uh, creates a uh, fertile ground for uh, psychiatry. Uh, even more amazing than that an academic medical center would pick substance use disorders as its number one uh, priority coming out of the strategic planning process is the fact that we have so many uh, psychiatrists, 200 psychologists, uh, three or 400 psychiatrists, all part of a general hospital. How does that happen? And, and it doesn't happen anywhere else, so thank you. Um, and uh, so thank uh, Eugene Flyer and uh, on behalf of MGH Psychiatry, 
welcome to friends, family, and colleagues celebrating John Kelly as the incumbent of, to this wonderful new endowed professorship, now named for John's mother, and one day to be named to honor him. John is a remarkable and multi-talented person. As his chief, I was well acquainted with his accomplishments and academic achievements, but really I came to uh, appreciate what an amazing man he is during and after uh, we spent some time together at the uh, Puerto Rican Foundation for Addiction Research, the co convocation that was held there. Um, he is, of course, a brilliant clinician, researcher, and teacher, as you've heard, but what I learned is he is also a hoot. <laughs> uh, a crack you up funny ad libber who just catches you unaware with his humor. You know, he has this wonderful British style and you think he's telling you deep truths and then suddenly <laughs> you realize you're out, uh, out, out on this edge and he's about to push you off. Uh, but more about his non-academic gifts in a moment. So John graduated summa cum laude with a major in psychology from Tufts, received his PhD at the University of California, San Diego, and San Diego State University. I was having a conversation with John's brother just moments ago, and we were, I was talking about this you know, phenomenon where he could just regale you and you're just swept in with these things you're learning only to realize at least, uh, you know, that, that you're being taken for right. He said, did he ever tell you that whole thing about having a PhD from San Diego? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that one's true. So. <laughs> so he was appointed thereafter as assistant professor at Stanford before returning east to join us as assistant professor and later associate professor of psychology in the Department of Psychiatry. He also served as uh, adjunct faculty at Brown. Every academic program that he's touched, San Diego, Brown, others, uh, became the other end of tug of wars for us to retain John, as he was always a target of external recruitment. Thank goodness for this professorship, so I hope I can cross that worry off, off the list. <laughs> uh, as you've heard, he serves as associate director for our Center of Addiction Medicine, directs the ARMS program, the Addiction Recovery Management Service, the newly launched Recovery Research Institute, which is uh, to facilitate new scientific discoveries, educate families, individuals, clinicians, administrators, policymakers about addiction recovery. And he also serves as president of the Society of Addiction Psychology of the American Psychological Association. He's an extremely well-funded investigator and international authority, has attracted much national and international media interest for his work. He has provided clinical expertise to the NBA, policy guidance to the White House, to the British Parliament, and education in the nation of Kuwait. Just just a few selections. He has received numerous grants to study the effects of mutual health organizations such as Alcoholics Anonymous and has developed and tested treatments that engage patients with these free community resources to enhance outcomes at little to no cost. He is an extremely creative man, as I mentioned, irrepressibly so. Uh, he conjures and entertains with extraordinary tales, and as I said, some of which turn out to be true. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, he is also a songwriter and producer. His musical influences are, quote, broad, ranging from Gustav Holst to Johnny Rotten. I don't know either of them. <laughs> His music portfolio reflects genres from pop to folk to dance and rock. Um, John spent his formative years growing up outside London, where he began playing guitar at age 14. He has been cranking out songs ever since. His songwriting, performance, and production have grown up with him. He has received a great deal of press and airplay on UK and US radio. And I recommend that you all go to johnkellymusic.com to check out some of his latest tunes. May I introduce the extraordinary John Kelly. Wow. Um, Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jerry. Um, that was terrific. And uh, thank you, Dr. Slade and, and Dean Plyer, um, for today and um, for your kind and encouraging words. And thank you all uh, for coming today. Uh, it's a real, obviously, a deep honor and pleasure. I'm extremely happy uh, to be this inaugural incumbent uh, of the Elizabeth Osbourne Professorship in Psychiatry in the field of addiction medicine. Um, I would like to begin uh, my remarks 
today by expressing once again my own sincere uh, gratitude to the anonymous donors for the generous gift which has created this professorship in addiction medicine. It is often said that you make a living by what you earn, but you make a life by what you give. And it is my genuine hope that the work that this endowed professorship will allow me to do, as well as those who follow me, will enrich the donors' own lives and contribute to their own happiness and satisfaction in the knowledge that their hard work and generosity is doing and will continue to do good. My mother, uh, Elizabeth Rosanna Spallon, in whose honor this professorship is currently named, uh, as alluded to already, was a nurse, a wife, and a mother who loved and sacrificed so much for the well-being of her family. As a young Irish immigrant with no resources, my mother trained and worked hard to achieve her goal of becoming a nurse. She rose to meet the tremendous challenges, duties, and responsibilities of both work and motherhood to ensure the well-being of her family. Consequently, for me personally, as the professorship's inaugural incumbent that bears her name, implicit in this gift is a memorandum of extraordinary duty and responsibility to ensure that its resources are used judiciously and to good effect. That is my intention and my aim. To do so will be to honor the sacrificial, hardworking, and humble spirit of my mother. If used wisely, I believe there is much good that can come, both directly in the vital research, practice, teaching, and training endeavors that this endowment will facilitate in the field of addiction medicine, but also indirectly through its physical establishment here at Harvard Medical School, which sends a message underscoring the importance of addiction in medicine at the highest academic level, which will help to destigmatize and to inspire other professionals and institutions to recognize and take action to help tens of millions suffering from addiction. Every single one of you present at today's celebration has played a role in the creation of this professorship, either directly or indirectly. It is truly a collective community effort of people working together for the greater good, that is the way I see it. I would not be standing here today if it were not for the hard work and moral and instrumental support that I have received from you all present here today in some form or other. First and foremost, uh, I'd like to acknowledge and thank my wife, Jeannie, who is sitting here. But without you sacrifice, <laughs> advice, validation, paper edits, and reviews, <laughs> uh, my presence here today uh, would not have been possible. Check out the publication in the general nature. <laughs> Never let me forget that. <laughs> she was like fourth author or something like that. <laughs> um, also to my father, Leo Kelly, who is here today, for his love and constant encouragement. My dad has been my staunch supporter, my life coach, my academic advisor, and the source of seemingly infinite wisdom and a power of example in how to carry oneself in the world. My sisters, Pauline, Anne, and Margaret, and my brother, Brendan, whose teasing, torment, and brutality <laughs> helped me build the character and resilience of the child that I would need later in my life here at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Just kidding. About the teasing part. The torment and brutality was true. Um, I would also like to thank my wife's family for coming here today, also for their love and support, always warm welcome, and for feeding me with endless glumkies. Uh, some of you know what that means. I mean, is that the first, I'm not sure if that's the first time that the word glumkie has ever been uttered in our medical school. Um, I certainly always wanted to use the word glumkey in an important speech, so having to do so. Unfortunately, there was insufficient time to mention the word pierogi today. But uh, perhaps at a future speech, I can talk about that. So this opportunity to establish a new professorship 
at Harvard Medical School would not have been possible without the hard work and dedication of my colleagues. I would like to thank, first and foremost, my mentor, Dr. Eden Evans, who is sitting in the front row. Without his leadership, generosity, patience, guidance, and moral support, this would never have been possible. I think we all need someone like Eden to cheer us on, but we are not always lucky enough to have someone like her. I consider myself fortunate to have her as a colleague and mentor. Also, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Jerry Rosenbaum, uh, Dr. Rizio Barba, uh, John Herm, Dr. John Herman, and Joy Rosen, uh, as well as to our excellent, excellent leaders here in addiction psychiatry, such as Tim Willens and Marty Kane, who have all supported, encouraged, and facilitated my work here. It is they who have championed this new emphasis on addiction and have provided me personally with the unremitting support and encouragement that has facilitated the growth of my own work. Their willingness to make themselves available for advice and guidance pretty much any time. Uh, I'm always impressed uh, how quickly I can get to speak to those guys. Uh, means a lot to me and to faculty and staff in our department. I'm personally very grateful for the continued support and help. I would like to thank also the tireless work of the development office, Carol Taylor and uh, Karen Blumenfeld. Uh, and many others in that office whose uh, efforts in philanthropy have really been so vital to uh, uh, our work in addiction. I would also like to uh, acknowledge and thank my own staff and close collaborators, Julia Taranen, Julie Costello, Claire Green, John Watson, Brandon Bergman, Alison Labby, and Bettina Hopner, who make my life better, happier, easier every day and who always make me look good by their hard work um, and flexibility, so often going the extra mile to accomplish our work. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marty Kane uh, and acknowledge her for her leadership and collaboration with me in the arms program, uh, which serves young people and their families suffering from addiction problems. <clears throat> and we've been blessed in the arms program with having many outstanding staff, many of whom are here today. And I'm very grateful and fortunate that we have such uh, loyal and dedicated people in our midst. So, better not 30 minutes to go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm standing here today, the product of a lot of prayers, a lot of love and support coming from all of you. The establishment of this new professorship in addiction medicine at Harvard Medical, Medical School, as I mentioned, has truly been a team effort. It is a success for our psychiatry departments and communities at MGH and Harvard. Proud institutions that can be even prouder today in establishing the first professorship in addiction medicine. Most importantly, it is a win for the countless individuals and families affected by addiction every day, whose hearts are broken, relationships destroyed, and health and well-being compromised. The burden of disease and disability related to alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs is immense and growing. It is also lethal. In the United States, every 20 minutes, someone dies of an opiate overdose. Every four minutes from alcohol, every two minutes from tobacco. All preventable causes of premature death. The establishment of this new professorship in addiction medicine that we are marking and celebrating today will ensure an unceasing dedication to tackle, these endemic, to tackle these endemic public health problems with drug and alcohol misuse. That is the duty and responsibility of the world's most respected institutions. It is so gratifying to see how committed Harvard Medical School and MGH are to addressing these endemic <coughs> problems. And this new professorship underscores that commitment. So that's where I will end. Thank you for coming, for your efforts, and for all your hard work that has made this possible.
in tribute to and reverence for the leadership, wisdom, and unwavering dedication to the highest professional standards, we do hereby install John Francis Kelly, PhD, as the inaugural Elizabeth R. Spallon Associate Professor of Psychiatry in the field of addiction medicine. We express our deepest appreciation and join in celebrating your appointment to this professorship at Harvard Medical School, given in Boston, Massachusetts, this 24th day of January, 2014. And then as a final bit of the ceremony, we would normally give this glass bowl or glass bowl like this to the donor, but since the donor is anonymous, we are instead going to give it to Peter Slavin, and I will read the uh, inscription. On one side, Elizabeth R. Spallon Professorship in Psychiatry in the Field of Addiction Medicine, celebrated on January 24th, 2014. And on the other side, closely opposed Harvard Medical School and the Massachusetts General Hospital. Peter? Thank you very much. Jeff and uh, Jerry and I were talking before the ceremony. Often when there are anonymous uh, gifts to Mass General Harvard Medical School, there are a handful of people, usually ourselves, who know who the anonymous donor is. In this case, we actually have no idea. It truly is an anonymous uh, gift. One thing I can say is that the donor was not me. I'm only two, uh, <laughs> one of uh, several other uh, billion people in this, uh, in this world. Um, uh, John, I'd, I'd like to present this uh, to you because, uh, you, number one, you may have a, a clue as to who the, uh, the anonymous donor uh, may be, but if not, it seems like this would be a fitting tribute to, uh, to you, your, your mother, and, and this great honor. We had the privilege of bestowing upon you today, so congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes the formal ceremony. We invite you to partake of a little more food and drink and enjoy each other's company and thank you for coming. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent work. Yeah. So I, um, I videotaped the whole thing. You, are, you did? Yeah. Thank you, John. <laughs> You're a gentleman, as always. Thank you. That's right. Oh. You know, we haven't met. Now we've got this on camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's, that's a stigma part of it. I always joke to the people I want to take a look. I gotta tell you. I wish I was. They keep this little. Is this here all the time? This background? Or do you set it up just for the 